I am so glad this virtual learning stuff is over with. Word. Girl, don't do it. Not gonna do it. Don't do it. Not gonna do it. We're, We're gonna, gonna do, do it. it. Welcome to our instructional video on how we made instructional videos. Virtual teaching, three things to consider. Nuts and bolts of making a video, engaging students, and strategies within that video. <laughs> Wait a minute, you need to know how we got here first. Yeah, I'm Rachel Peart. And I'm Mandy Ryan. And, and we, we both, both teach math. math. When this whole thing first started, all of us teachers were kind of scrambling for what to do. How are we going to gauge our students? How are we going to make sure they're still learning? So we were in the same position as everybody. And we were about to start a unit in our curriculum that we just love. So we thought, okay, with the restrictions that we have, we have to be socially distant. We have to be outside. What can we do? And of course, it would seem obvious, sidewalk chalk. Yeah, and then it just kind of exploded from there, video after video. I mean, if we go back and think, like we started with a camera, a backyard, her math curriculum she worked so hard on, and like a computer for editing. We really didn't start with much, and we neither of us started as camera people. I wouldn't even <laughs> say we're camera people now. But, I mean, we stepped out of our comfort zone a little bit, and it just, it, it ended up being so successful for our students. Yeah, and so here's the few things that we've learned. Have a plan, have a buddy. Also, we learned to keep the video short. Better have two five minute videos than one longer video. Video editing doesn't need to be complicated. Start small. Also, we made sure not to be monotone because anyone, anyone, it gets, it gets a little boring. So we wanted to make sure to have the right interjection from time to time. We also learned a lot about engaging our students. We changed mediums a lot. We used chalk, pen, paper, digital ink. We even painted the grass once. The background itself was changing. We used a desk, classroom, our hallway. We used the backyard in so many ways, even a pool. We learned that we had to be relatable and even goofy sometimes, but we were sure to be careful because we're still the teacher. We liked using a theme and so did our students, but we had to remember that the theme was just the structure for the learning. With virtual learning, we found we had to use a few different strategies. For one, we had to talk a little bit faster. In the classroom, I use wait time, of course, but that is not good in a video because you're trying to keep it short and manageable. We needed to figure out a way to make the videos interactive. So we learned that, hey, we could incorporate a pause and try, and then they come back to the video and check. Or having a warm up before the video, so they're refreshing that learning before they start the video. We also did like a notes template in the description at the bottom so that they could click on that and follow along. We had to be really intentional about new learning and vocab. So like you could have something written out behind you if you're being videoed. We added different colors and visual cues. We could even have the number pop in that correlated to the problem on the note template. Creating supporting videos was also something we found helpful. Like if we're getting a question about something a lot, just make a supporting video about it to help them understand. Yeah, no matter how much you plan, there's gonna be something that comes up that you didn't anticipate. Then our favorite mantra to students, because it's so important for learning is, Pause, rewind, rewatch. Here are some pros and cons of how we did virtual learning. Pro, it pushed us to be more creative and in the end that enriched the learning environment. Con, no live feedback. You can't adjust your lesson in real time and you can't see the kids' faces when they're learning to know if they understand. Pro, we were able to control the delivery, reshoot, make mistakes, mistake all mistake. the time. Add in things if we forgot to mention them, and then we knew what students were learning because we made the videos. Con. You can please all of the people some of the time, and some of the people all of the time, but you cannot please all of the people all of the time. It was too fast. It was too slow. There were too many examples. There weren't enough examples. Oh my. Please. Pro! Engagement! 92% of students who we surveyed said that they found the videos very helpful. 
con. Time. Pro. We were able to give high quality instruction any time. So if a student couldn't tune in at a certain time, they were able to access that same instruction no matter what. Con. Time. Pro. One of the things that surprised me is how much more in-depth I could show the math. Students even commented it wasn't just about doing the math, it was kind of showing how and why. What, what was that 37th con again? Time. 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 Okay, after a few months of virtual learning, we wanted to reflect, so we gave the students a survey to see what they thought. 93% of the students thought it was really important that we send out a weekly email, and it was just really short saying what they needed to get done for the week. Yeah, students also mentioned that deadlines would have been helpful for virtual learning. So like not letting work pile up week after week. Which we know doesn't help them, but it really doesn't help us either. We had no idea after weeks like, oh my gosh, how did I grade this? Did I mark down for that? What do I do now? So deadlines, if at all possible, very important. We also had students submitting materials electronically, and when we did that, we would have them take pictures of their work and submit that so we could kind of confirm that they had supporting work. Students mentioned that that was important to deter cheating because, yeah. Yeah, and in addition, they said make sure the student writes their name on it. Pro Smart tip, kids, it sounds yeah. like. Mm -hmm. And one of the really cool things we found in the surveys is that students mentioned they love having a review or recap video. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't even as hard as the others were because we would use previous footage and just kind of recap what we had done. Looking forward to next year, there's a few things that we wanted to take note of, especially seeing as how things are uncertain, such as getting to know our students when we have them in class and making sure they're getting to know us. That way we can avoid any awkwardness when we move to virtual learning. And if we have to move to virtual learning, we're going to make sure and actively teach what we want them to do, such as get those notes out, do the warm up, start the video, complete the notes as you watch the video, and then keep those available when you try the assignment. And then just like the videos were broken up into small chunks, we think that maybe making assignments into smaller chunks. So we can absolutely assign the same amount of work, but somehow it feels a little bit different doing two 10 problem assignments than one 20 problem assignment. When this all started, we seriously made these videos just to try something. Yeah, we didn't know anything more than anyone else. We just had to choose to step out of our comfort zone and give it a try. We were kicking ourselves week to week though because of all the work. It was so much time. We do not want to mislead. But I will say that the feedback we got from parents and students made it worth it. For us, this created a way we could stay connected to our students and them to us and keep them engaged in learning. And most important, it helped us deepen and ensure student learning because if that's not happening, what are we here for? Mm -hmm.